Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. This is gonna be a fun video, somewhat of a freestyle video with purpose. I'm out here in the Grand Canyon on the South Rim. That's about 0645. It feels like we're on the edge of the world here. I'm not gonna go out too far. This is probably about as far as I feel comfortable going with the drop off, but here's a quick view before we start the intro. We got some tourists over there. Sun's to my east. North Rim's over there. Um, just spectacular. So we're going to go ahead and launch, or basically this is going to be the debut video of my TTP MCOM link dipole. That was a collaboration with Tim Ortiz and 9SAB. Five band link dipole, purpose built for my needs. So thanks a lot, Tim. And then we're also going to do a no random contacts with Kilo Charlie 8, Oscar Whiskey Lima. And we're going to be experimenting with the QDX by QRP Labs and also uh, experimenting with JSA Call. So we've got full comms plan, after action report, gear testing. So this is going to be a long video. So stay tuned and uh, hopefully you'll have fun. This is one heck of an adventure. So I finished my trail run, picked up some coffee from uh, the bike shop at the visitor center, and I'm headed back to my camp. Tomorrow is my targeted contact day. So today is really an opportunity to do a gear test. Now I'm gonna apologize for any wind noise in advance since I was running the uh, Southern Rim this morning. Uh, I went ultra light. In fact, I barely even have a tripod. I'm on a selfie stick. I'm also out here in an area that has a lot of trees. So I'm not used to operating with trees. In fact, the antenna that I designed, the TTP MCOM link dipole that we're gonna take a look at, was actually designed to have a center support and an apex of six feet using my Soda Beams carbon six carbon fiber mast with the ends going out to about four feet in height using the um, my trekking poles. Don't have any of that stuff, but there are trees. So let's go ahead really quickly and take a look at some of the gear. Okay, so I'm not used to deploying stuff in the trees, but the uh, 20 and 40 meter elements took about 20 minutes to set up and I had just enough cordage. So at the center here, we have uh, the dipole itself. I'm also running Tim's inline choke here and then a little bit of RG316 feed line. I think it's about 12 feet and uh, George from Pac Tennis sent me this sometime back. So I've intentionally Put this at the six foot height like i said this antenna was designed specifically for my operating use case where i do not have trees i typically operate environments where i have to carry my own supports so we're at six feet here and we're going to go out to this location and we can actually see here the 20 meter section now these are bullets and you can actually disconnect this this is why they call it a link dipole so if i wanted to work 20 meters we're probably too low for 20 meters we could disconnect these links do the same thing on the other side and we would be good to go. And then I have it going out all the way to the 40 meter section here. And then optionally, if I wanted to work 60, 75 or 80, I could add all of those links and attach the, or attach the uh, mechanical links as needed. And then a little bit of cordage here. I always like to use an overhand knot with the carabiners. And then I have uh, looped it over this branch with another S-clip carabiner. So let's go ahead and uh, connect the QDX and I'll show you some more gear. All right, for my transceiver, I've opted to go with the QDX by QRP Labs. This is a five band, five watt transceiver that can only do select single tone FSK modes. Now I get a lot of criticism on why I selected this one over the, I think it's a true SDX. And the reason for it is simplicity. I see this as a purpose built tool that's no frills, ultra compact and just does one thing well and that's all I really want. So you can actually see here we've got the nice little aluminum closure. We have a very simple LED light on the front that provides all the status information and then I have been running for power for many years now the Taloncell 3000 milliamp hour battery. I'll put a link down below and then uh, I've been running this upwards of 12 hours every single day for the last week and absolutely love the performance. So all we're going to do for this little guy to interface it with our field computer it's connected to a USB cable and really just go ahead and let's do this one handed power on the the QDX for my computer. I've opted for the Panasonic FZM1. This is my new standard field computer with the iKey integrated keyboard. This will actually give me two USB ports. Now I'm running my specialized operating system. It's a distribution based on Ubuntu called MCOM tools and it's not yet available. So we're going to launch the MCOM tools application. And one of the goals of this project is to do zero configuration uh, to make things really easy in the field. So we'll go ahead and select a radio. 
I've added support for the QRP Labs QDX, and this will configure all of the applications to just work straight out of the box. All right, folks, so we're up and running. I have JSA call running. I just sent a heartbeat, but let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the station. So we've got the link dipole up about six foot. Again, that's the apex that it was designed for. I've got RG316 feed line coming down into the QDX, and then we have the USB cable going into the field notebook. Now I am uh, heart beating my, sending it a heartbeat so other people can see me, and it looks like we already see a station uh, on there. Actually, that's an odd looking call sign. That doesn't even look like a call sign. Um, anyways, so it looks like our pre-planning is going to be successful. I have to give myself probably 45 minutes. I think I'll give myself an hour. So the plan is to, uh, I'm not going to reveal the comms plan uh, so people don't squash our um, exercise, but I'm going to give myself an hour before uh, the event to set up and then I'll run some tests. And then my plan is to do a targeted contact using JSA call with my buddy Mike Kilo Charlie 8, Oscar Whiskey Lima. And uh, he's about 150 miles from my location. We're actually at the same latitude, so he's directly due uh, west of me right now. And uh, yeah, we'll see if this is a viable option. Again, my goal is to see, can such a small footprint device like the QDX running almost no power, I mean, that thing sips power, with a ruggedized field notebook like this be all you need for comms? Uh, the other cool thing, we'll look at this in the future, when we pair this with the APRS IS uh, set of services, we could do worldwide email and text messaging to non-hams. All right. Well, folks, yesterday was our actual comma window. Actually, it was the day before yesterday, and there were quite a few fails. I arrived on time, deployed everything, was able to receive and hear Mike's transmissions, but for some reason, my signal was not going out. So I'm gonna talk about what went wrong, how I fixed it in the after action report. I'll put a timestamp down below for that. Today is sort of redemption day. While I can't go through the combo plan since Mike is not available, one of the cool features with JS8 Call is that we can store uh, messages for other operators on other operators' stations. So per our comps plan, Mike actually left me two messages on two different stations, and I'm gonna see a couple days later without Mike being on the air, maybe his, who knows, if I can fetch those. Uh, we're back out here. The antenna deployment is a little bit different. This is a new location for me. We've got the antenna actually up about seven feet now, still uh, going off to trees on either side. And actually the SWR is a little bit better. We're just under 1.5 to one on the JS8 calling frequency, which is 7.078 megahertz. And my setup is pretty modest again. This is the entire station here, FZM1 with the um, QDX. So I'm gonna get on the air real quick and we're gonna see if we can grab those messages from Mike from one or both of those other stations. All right, guys, we've solved the technical issue. I've got the laptop fired up. And uh, as you can see on the screen, we already have some stations that are hearing me. Now I'm brand new to JSA call, so please bear with any uh, operator faux pas. But I can see here that I can hear a few stations and there are a number of stars on the screen. Now if I take a look at uh, my updated combo plan, Mike told me that he had left messages for me on Whiskey Bravo 6, Echo Delta Kilo, and Kilo Alpha 6, India Zulu, Zulu Romeo. And it looks like both of them are actually listed. So we're doing this for the first time together. Uh, let's do this real quick. So one thing I wanted to make sure that uh, was working this time was that audio was actually being driven. So I have my FT818 ND over here and I have it with a small whip antenna. And we're gonna go ahead and do another heartbeat really quickly. And this is a good indicator if you have a second radio on whether or not a station can hear you. So I'm gonna go send heartbeat now. And within about probably four seconds, I'm gonna start transmitting and we should hear uh, some FSK tones. So that's a good, good sign here. And when I did that heartbeat, other stations knew that I was on the network and I guess they lit up um, all of these little star indicators for me. Again, brand new to JSA call. According to my notes, he left one for me. I think this is a California station, the Kilo Alpha 6. So we're gonna repeat the same procedure. 
and I know this is going to be a long video, but uh, we're learning together here. So we're going to right click on him, and I'm going to do directed to KA6. I'm going to query him, say, do you have messages for me? And then we're going to descend and belt and suspenders. I'm going to listen for some tone in about four seconds. So if this works well, we should be able to, one, receive an acknowledgement that yes, there is a message for me. Two, it'll give me message ID, and then I have to go back and submit another query. Now, I don't know a lot about JSA. I've only been using it for a few days now, but I think I'm gonna be able to wrap up a lot of this within the MCOM tools platform to make it work more like a traditional email client and messenger application that takes care of all of this. So yeah, on the screen it says that Kilo Alpha 6 India Zulu Romeo has a message for KT7 RUN. So I think last time too, it also followed up with a message ID. So while that is going in the background, the other great thing here is that, oh, is that we're just running five watts on this little tiny uh, QDX, which is amazing with my link dipole antenna only up about seven feet. So we have message ID 435. So I'm gonna go back now, right click on him, directed message, and we're gonna do query message ID. And the ID now is 435, and then we're going to hit send. So this is actually pretty cool. I mean, this is, truly is uh, MCOM, given the fact that this little QDX is sipping power. Antenna deployment was fairly straightforward. Now, one thing I know that is going to happen based on the last um, exercise we did where we tried reading from the inbox, this call sign is probably going to jump to the top again, and then it's going to include the little flag symbol. Right now, we just have a little star, which means that that station can hear me. So a good example here, a little bit farther, you see there's no star next to November Zero Golf Echo uh, Sierra. That means I can hear him, but he can't hear me. More paint drying, waiting for the, um, the message to populate in the inbox. Oh, cool. There's our message from, uh, from Mike. So it says there, KT Run 7. Message, QRP Labs, QDX, 5 watts, 40 meter dipole, Envis. Excellent. So that was exactly what we had in our combo plan. We wanted to put in our radio, our power, and our antenna. And that's the other cool thing. Mike is actually running a twin setup. I sent him my second QDX, and he's, and he's the second person to have the link dipole. So we're both running on five watts. Excellent stuff. I guess we'll just show the inbox real quick so you can see. So there's the, uh, the message from Mike. Oh, it looks like Kilo Charlie 8 Oscar Whiskey Lima is there. Forget it. I'm going to try to go direct to him. Excellent. Let's see if he's still there. So we're going to do we're going to do a direct message. And I'm going to put uh, our QRP lab or QDX 5 watts TTP dipole. Cool. So I can hear him and let's send that. So guys, like I said, um, what's happening here you're watching me do this for the very first time, but these are a lot of the issues I think people are gonna have as they get exposed to this. I'm not an expert in anything, uh, but I do like to come out here and train. So let's take a look at the highlights. I learned from my mistakes. We're gonna have an after action report, probably in part two. This is gonna be a long video, so we'll break this one up. We're able to get out here, run minimal power, five watts, low antenna, and we're able to retrieve messages uh, that someone else left for me. and. Right now, I'm going to see if I can actually go direct with, with Mike. Um, if not, I'm pretty sure he's going to capture this on his screen. And if he does, I'll put an overlay on the screen with his, his response. All right, guys, he's actually responding. So again, I did not let Mike know I was coming out here. I kind of said, hey, I might come out. Uh, he said my station is running, but may not be monitoring it. So yep, he got a QSL from him, and he's also running the QRP labs. So we did it guys. I don't want to belabor the point here. This video is long enough. Bottom line is this is going to be a new mode you're going to see for me. You're going to see JSA call running a lot. Um, I 
am a programmer, so I read the source code and I'm gonna enable and actually hook into MCOM tools an integration with JSA Call within the year. And if you haven't bought one already, I suggest taking a look at the QDX by uh, QRP Labs. This thing is absolutely amazing. And while it doesn't do everything, doesn't do VARA, doesn't do any of the modes for WinLink, you can see here, him and I are running twin setups with very minimal investment are able to have two-way conversation. With that said, guys, don't have anything to drink. I'm the tech prepper. I'm the tech prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.